Because I was certain guys that I really liked to watch and that were really impressive to me in every way. Jerry the King Lawler, of course. Dusty Rhodes, I think, was great. Dick Murdoch, who I was a good friend with later on down the uh, line. Um, one guy I never got to work with, but I thought was incredible, was uh, the magnificent Don Morocco. Oh, yeah. To me, he was right up there with Lawler and him. I mean, Morocco's tremendous. You know, mm. I loved watching him. But that's when I was getting getting started in the business. I like I liked to to uh, watch different guys and learn from them. I mean, I know I was never going to be an intercontinental champion like Don Morocco, but I, I liked his, you know, procedures in the ring. I liked his talking, you know. So he was him, Lawler, Dusty Rhodes, Dick Murdoch I liked, you know. Uh, a lot of guys I liked watching. A lot of guys, a lot of y'all wouldn't have probably heard of, just Memphis guys. But, you know, I learned a lot from a lot of guys in Memphis too. So you've been around the game a long time. You've seen a lot of stuff. What would you say was the saddest day you ever experienced in pro wrestling? July 4th, 1994, when I was in the wreck, maybe, what, an hour, hour and a half from here with Joey Morella, Gorilla Monsoon son. Um, without a doubt, nothing even comes in second place. I mean, the boy, and I say boy, he was only 31 at the time. The boy died in my, practically in my arms, you know, in the, in the, uh, Nothing comes close to that, you know. I mean, coming back from Ocean City, Maryland, heading to Newark, he was driving. I was asleep. Unfortunately, so was he. Mm. And uh, he, I've got the accident report in my safety deposit box at home in, in uh, Mississippi. Basically, just blunt force trauma to the head, you know. He was just – he was gone right there. He didn't suffer, at least. Thank God. Um, did you end up having a conversation with Gorilla Monsoon? And yeah. what was that like? Well, I'll tell you. He, uh, we talked on the phone. And he said, you know, I don't blame you in any way. He goes, those things happen. You know, and I'll see you back at, you know. I didn't even miss it. I didn't even miss one day of work. We were, that was July 4th. We were off for like four or five days after that. And always, I mean, not because of the wreck. Right. I started back the very next week in uh, Youngstown, Ohio. Wow. Didn't miss a day of work. Wow. And uh, that's back when Gino, you know, Gorilla was the on-screen, I think, president of WWE yeah, sure. or commissioner or something. Commit, yeah. So, and I was, you know, Harvey Whippleman, the bad guy manager. So I seen Gino, we hugged and everything. Then we had to do a interaction thing where he would say, well, Harvey, blah, blah, blah. So I was doing my part. And this is what really broke the ice. When I said, let me tell you something, you know good, blah, blah, blah. He goes, well, let me tell you something, you little pipsqueak. You know what I mean? It broke the ice. And we was like, business as usual. Back to life. Yeah, back to life. It, to me, that's amazing. You know that, right? It's like yeah. I, you know, but both of you guys, I don't know how you could recover so, so fast. I was blessed by the Lord. I'm a very strong Catholic Christian, so I believe strongly in that. Um, um I mean, thank God, I wish Joey would have lived, of course. But, I mean, if God was ready to, like, I have the letter at home that Gino wrote me. Um, I don't think his wife wrote it, but I think it was Gino's words. Can you, can you share a little bit about that? Oh, the yeah. Sure. He, he said, apparently God needed a, a right-hander and not a manager at this time. Right-hander, a referee. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So that that was, you know, it meant a lot to me. Um, I mean, that does say a lot about Monsoon, right? That he just lost his son, but he's also worried about you and how it's affecting you. And he right. felt it necessary to to write you about yes. that. Yeah, it meant a lot to me because, I mean, it was nobody's fault. I don't know what happened to cause that to, for Joey. So, I mean, it was just, it was traumatic. You know, I mean, how else can you put it? It was just, but I had to keep moving, you know. And it was like I was in the hospital there in, in uh, Morristown, North, North uh, Jersey. And, you know, there was no cell phones or nothing back in. And I don't know how bad he was mutilated or, or, or sure. whatever. I don't know. Here's the thing. I wouldn't know you from the President of the United States without my glasses. Okay, right. I'm very near and far sighted. I've got no line bifocal. I can't see without my glasses, period. Well, God saw fit to take my glasses off of me in the yeah. wreck. They flew off my head or whatever. Obviously, it was, you know, traumatic accident. 
So I didn't get to see, thankfully, Joey. You know, I can't see. There's no cell phones. I always have an extra pair of glasses in my suitcase out in the car right now, you know, because if something happens to these, I'm screwed, right. you know. So, yeah, sure. so I'm rooting around trying to find my suitcase, and I can't find it. Evidently, it was thrown away from the vehicle. I can't see. I'll never forget this. I says, Joey, you're dead, ain't you? Mm. And he didn't answer. There was a smell like I've never smelled before. It was obviously the smell of death, mm-hmm. okay? I yeah. mean, I'm no expert on that or no pathologist, whatever the word, coroner, but it was a smell I never smelled before. It had to be the smell of death, I, I, you know. Not to be morbid, I'm just being truthful. I can't see anything. I can see light. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, it's not black. You know what I mean? I can see. I can take my glass off. I can see. I can tell there's a person right. sitting there, you know, but I, I couldn't identify you. You know what I mean? So anyway, I can hear the traffic on the highway, and I can see the lights of the, you know, Nobody can even see because we're so far down that ditch, that, that hill or what you want to call it. Nobody can know what's happening. So I crawled up. I can't see. I'm crawling towards the light. Uh, literally, not, you know, to heaven. You know what I'm saying? Towards the light. And I get up there. I'm waving my arms. Well, nobody can see that there was a car in the ditch or nothing. So they just thought, oh, this is some crackpot. On my eye. You know what I mean? I would have thought the same thing. Um, long story short, finally this truck driver stopped. Because he's seen where the guardrail was smashed. I guess he paid attention. And I'll never forget it. This is almost uh, 30 years ago. His name was Tobias Schrock. I'll never forget it because, you know, his name was in the accident report and everything. Uh, God willing, I hope he's still living and thriving and doing well. And if he hears this, I ain't never forgot you for this. He got on his CB or whatever and called, you know, uh, Whoever he called, the authorities or whatever. Before you know it, it was lit up like the 4th of July there. There was ambulances, fire trucks, police, you name it. And they got me to the hospital. A little while later in the hospital, uh, they said, uh, is your name Bruno Lauer? Yes. We found your suitcase. Oh, thank God. I put my glasses on. Nobody would tell me. I kept asking, is, is, how about the other guy? How about the other guy? I was hoping somebody would say, he was knocked out, but he's okay, whatever. But right. Finally, this one doctor came in and says, yeah, he didn't make it. You know, at least I, I wasn't happy to hear that. Right. Don't get me wrong, but I needed to know. You know, I was happy ain't the right word, but I just needed closure of one way or the other. I didn't want to be, is he laying as a vegetable? Is he, right. whatever. I just need to know. And uh, all I ever got out of the whole thing was a broken nose and like two stitches in my hand. You can't even see it now. I guess if I really studied, I could find it. But that was it. Yeah. I guess God. my nose God. hit the dashboard or something, you know. But And Joey lost his life, you know. So I, get, I almost lost mine for the business. So, you know, thank you, Jesus, you know. And God bless Joey. I hope he's having a great uh, reunion with uh, Gino in, in heaven. I know he's in heaven, and I know Gino is. So they're in a better place than us, you know. All right, man, I want to thank you for joining us.